player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 159 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm your host here, Kevin, along with my... Are you my father? Oh. How are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you're only listening on audio services, you should definitely go to youtube.com slash two player co-op and see what's happening right now. Uh, this is my brother from my mother show on, I promise. And I'm not about to get force choked. Uh, if this is the first time you're seeing or listening to us, yes, yes, uh, no, oh, two player. That was perfect. We didn't even plan that. This is the two. Pl- I don't even know what's happening. Two player co-op podcast where every week, just about we get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games. If you like that, make sure you go to youtube.com slash two player co-op, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video with your friends and family. Lord Vader. Rise. Rise. All right. Now you gotta make sure it's nice and centered. Um, so yeah, that's a podcast. Even if you listen on audio services around the multiverse, make sure to go to youtube.com slash two player co-op. That would mean a lot. If you really like us, you can go to patreon.com slash two player co-op. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta do the force this time. Uh just like our producer, Steve Appleton, did our affiliates, Logan Wilkinson and James Solar, and the first ever two player co-op partner, Matt Mitchell. Woo! Thank you guys so much. Today was thank you patrons day. I hope you saw our yes, message thank out you there. All. You all mean the world to us. You'll rock. And we've got a few $1 patrons too. Thank you to everybody. That, that If you contribute anything, it means the world to us. Thank you so much. If you didn't see the message, go over to Twitter. Dot, go over to at two player underscore co-op on Twitter. Are we going to tell them what we discussed? Oh yeah, that's right. The, by the time this goes live, I should have tweeted it hopefully, or if not, I'll tweet it right after. Um, but I forgot that you can actually do goals. So we've got the tiers on Patreon. You've also got goals that you can do, and we're right now when they take their fees and stuff out of it at forty six dollars per month. If we get to fifty, so another basically one more five dollar pledge once they take their fees out of it. If we get to fifty, as long as we stay at fifty, we're going to bring back verses. We're going to do one episode a month. Um, we're going to let y'all decide on what that episode is. We'll we'll have some matchups because we've got a list of matchups that we would like to do. We'll take some viewer requests too. Yeah, though, if you got and ideas, that's, and we and I have going to do like, ooh, them. let's do versus Street Fighter versus uh, Street Mario Fighter. Three right. versus a Street Fighter. Like right. we need to have some kind of a, a system, so we'll have some matchups that we'll put up for a vote. Yep, and you know, obviously, we're willing to listen if anybody else has any other good ideas. Got to be games we can get relatively yeah. easily. It, and just be, yeah, remember, versus is always retro themed. Yes. Um, and I did think of a funny one today. This will still come through, but whatever. Ninja Turtles four versus reshelled. I like it. I mean, I think, you, you said that louder than you had to. I know, but <laughs> I, I was think, like, I, I kind of want to do the teeth, <laughs> but uh, it's a pain hooking the PS three up to Elgato, but we'll make it work. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, we're just we're basically one five dollar pledge away from bringing that back. So if you're not a patron yet, or if you want to up your subscription or whatever, it's don't feel like you have to. No, but no, that's no. our goal. We're thinking about doing a hundred hundred dollar goal too. Although if we ever hit a hundred dollars, I think we both our minds would explode. Yeah. But we're thinking about one for that too. But we'll we'll talk on that as we get closer to it. Um, if you like merch, you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash two player co op. If you want to see us Twitch every once in a while, go to twitch.tv slash two player underscore co op. Hey, in post pro, be sure to add a lightsaber onto this. I don't know. I have iMovie. I don't have anything fancy. That better, that better have a lightsaber on it later. Well, it looked like a, it could be a little mini lightsaber. <laughs> um, so, yeah, before we get into everything, there's a couple things I want to touch on. I don't know if there's anything Sean wants to touch on. This just broke. Um, Your phone? Everything's fixed, though. It's okay. Uh, let me find this here. Um, I never watched the, not that you guys know what just happened. I never saw the thing about the congressman. Oh, I did. Did he definitely like, I Colin heard, was I saying s- he's worried that he actually pooped his pants. <laughs> that he didn't <laughs> just fart. <laughs> that he sharted. If it was a fart, <clears throat> it was more likely a shart. Oh. So one person I saw say that's, you know, as funny as it would be if it was a fart, that was a phone vibrating on a hard surface. Oh, uh, okay. But it was not. Okay. Because he straight up stops talking. I don't like, remember what oh. he's saying, but he's like, I'm just talking and then, and then I'm like, he stops the noise. Has, so it's like he would have had to see the buzz coming. 
It was it was definitely a fart. It's like me when that one uh, we should tweet <laughs> out. We should just clip that out. One of the funniest things that I've ever seen. One of the Mario makers that we did. I don't remember if it was seven or eight, nine, whatever it was. But it was the level where Sean was making me play through a creation from somebody else where there's all the purple lava and stuff and you jump from thing to thing and everything's messing up. And one time I got so scared as I was making a jump, I didn't think I was going to make it. And you, you tensed up a little I bit. I tensed up. Yeah. I lost control of my body, realized it, and then died immediately. And it's the funniest five-second clip I think I've ever seen. <laughs> um, we do you Remember to do that tomorrow. Clip that out and I'll post it because it's just... Oh, it's one of the funniest moments ever, and I love to be self-deprecating, so it's fine. Um, you were almost self-defecating. <laughs> it was very <laughs> close. That was very good. We didn't plan this. That was really good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so before we get into everything else, this just broke. Uh, Henry Cavill is on the cover of Men's Health. 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 <laughs> health this week, and they asked him about Superman and if he was done, and his response was, I've not given up the role. There's a lot I have to give for Superman yet. A lot of storytelling to do. A lot of real, true depths to the honesty of the character I want to get into. I want to reflect the comic books. That's important to me, dot, dot, dot. The status is, you'll see. I I would just say take that with a grain of salt. That sounds like he's saying, I don't want to be done. But, I mean, it's... I get it, but the fact that he said, you I mean, that's, see. that's good. That's at least a, a step in the right no, direction. No, I agree, but. but I think the fact that he said at the end, that until the end, it's just like, well, it's up to WB. But when he says the status is, you'll see. And we don't know what the inflection was or anything. I'm just assuming. I don't think he just said the status very, is, I mean, you'll we'll see. see. Yeah. And he's British anyway, so he didn't sound like that when he said it, I'm sure. But um, if we get another one, if we only get one more, <coughs> give us Bizarro. You got to do a Bizarro movie. I would love if they did Bizarro as long as they don't turn Cavill into Bizarro. I want Cavill versus Bizarro is what I want. Because well, what I... Th- but, I, I mean, they would both be Bizarro. I mean, they would both be Cavill, right? True. Right. That's how they But I want be, good but. guy. I want, like, now that as bad as Justice League was just over two years ago, feels like a lifetime ago that it came out... Um, as bad as it was, by the end of that movie, we got... Spoiler alert. You know he's alive. I mean, I just read the quote. We got the Superman that we deserve. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's, right. he's smiling and he's saying, I'm a big fan. I believe in truth and I'm a big fan of justice, too. And he's smiling and he's doing the ice breath. And, like, other than the CGI, it was what Cavill could be as Superman, you know? Yeah. And we deserve... He, he deserve... We, like Greg Miller was tweeting yesterday, he was just joking around that he watched the Iron Giant and he was like, that wasn't that good. I've never seen the Iron Giant, so I have no opinion either way. But then he's like, time for some real cinema. And it sh- he did like a screen capture and he goes over on Amazon Prime and he opens up Batman vs. Superman. And then he tweeted again. He's like, man, I really was just doing that for the joke, but now I've started it and I can't watch it. And man, Henry Cavill is awesome and they did him so dirty. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He wasn't my favorite in Batman vs. Superman, but again, Man of Steel is one of my favorite comic book movies. I love it. And the little bit that he was in Justice League, if you can look past the CGI, he was awesome. And he's he, that's my Superman. That's my quarterback. That's my Superman. So I hope, I really hope, especially now that the Black Adam movie is happening, imagine Cavill. <clears throat> and they're doing Black lot. Adam as, as a superhero, not a villain or some kind of tweener or something. See, I know nothing about Black Adam. I don't know much either. I'd, Ernie, help us out. But... Typically, he's either a, he's. I think he's typically a villain, but you can't make the Rock a straight up bad guy. So that has to be Razor Ramon. What What was the music that actually is that? If you speed it Stone up a Cold. little bit, it is Stone Cold. That's right. Or you 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 speed Stone Cold's up. You speed no, you Stone Cold up. Down. No, you speed Stone Cold up to get Razor. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm just glad that it came out like. I'm glad he's like, no, FWB, you know, I'm glad he's not like that. I don't know what I said. I'm glad he wants to be Superman because he's, he's the best Superman we've ever had. But now they've already, they've already said, uh, the Witcher is getting a second season. Have you watched that at all? No, it's not out yet. The Witcher? Yeah. No, it's out in December. 
I thought it was out already. No. It's like December uh, okay. 10th or something. I mean, well, that spoiler alert. I also <laughs> have not watched it yet. I was like, wait, have you? <laughs> Did you get a screener of I got it or early something? access to it. Oh, uh, can you get, can you like redeem codes on Netflix? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm the DC fanboy. I had to say that. Uh, so I'm curious without going off on too big of a tangent. Sure. Um, we're, how many? I'm I'm wondering how far into the Marvel, the MCU, <clears throat> the MCU, you have to go before you start saying. I'm making this really wordy. All I'm really trying to see is where, not literally a number, but where your where um. It'll come to me. Man of Steel mm-hmm. is in your <clears throat> superhero movies, so obviously it's behind. Endgame, Dark Knight, Logan. I mean, is it behind? It's behind all Infinity three War? Dark Knight trilogy movies. I, I would say even Dark Knight. Well, <clears throat> actually, no. It's about even with Dark Knight Rises, I would say. <clears throat> it's below all four. Well, all three Avengers that you've seen? Yes. Behind, below Spider-Man? Yes. Spider-Man is... It's above Far From Home. Mic drop. I like it better than Far From Home. Far From Home seems like the kind of movie that I think as soon as it's on Disney Plus, I'm gonna watch it again, and I think I'm gonna like it a lot more the second time. Yeah, because now you don't have your expectations as exactly. high. Like yeah. mine were through the roof because Spider Man is probably Endgame, Endgame, Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Spider Man, Homecoming. I think is yeah. how it goes for me. Yeah, I saw. I think it was Boss Logic put up a thing last week. He did Spider Man No Place Like Home. I was like, why didn't I think of that name? I don't know that that's what it's going to end up being, but remember that after we watched it, we were like home, <clears throat> home far. I don't know, home, home away from home, home fries. Like we never got to know. Well, yeah, like there's home. all these things like he probably. And it would make some, sense since he's good. Well, well, it's, it's going to be back in thing, New York City. That's all. The whole thing with like him coming back to the MCU. You know, there's all sorts of like. Uh, that's true. Yeah, and it's like, the first thing that popped into my mind. I'm like, oh, they should call it coming home. Like, like, wait, we've man. already done Homecoming. I don't think you can do Coming Home after Homecoming, but... Yeah. Coming home. Coming I'll home. be very disappointed. They have to have home in it, right? They have... At this point, they have to. Yeah. But so what else is there? So it's it's behind Black Panther, Avengers. What else have I seen? It's probably about the same level as First Avenger. First Avenger and Far From Home, I put about the same. I really like... I like First Avenger. I think Avenger. if you saw... Oh. <clears throat> okay. It's Captain America. Yeah, I thought you were saying first. I was like, no, I'm sure. Okay, it's been like we were saying before. It's probably it's been seven years since I saw the Avengers, but now that I got Disney Plus. I need to watch it again. But it's probably it's down. But then, like, I do think I like Shazam just a hair better. Maybe Wonder Woman a hair better too. You know, Aquaman is a little bit below it than Batman. When is 1984? June. It was supposed to be this month, and they bumped it back seven months. Wow. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, last week I had not watched The Mandalorian. I did watch The Mandalorian. I also watched episode two, and it is fantastic. It's not like it's like I was telling you. It reminds me so much of Rogue One, only in the, the like the setting and the grittiness and the there's no lightsabers. There's no. It's it's obviously it doesn't have the importance that Rogue One did. Like that's a very important story and how they got the the Death Star plans and all that, and it had the best Star Vader moment in history. Not even a moment, like a scene, I mean. Um, but I'm digging it. I'm not going to talk about the spoiler, although now it is all over Twitter. So I mean, you can't. Yeah. If you haven't seen The Mandalorian, it's. I probably should just talk about it because it's already been spoiled for you, but I'm not going to. But I love the spoiler at the end of episode one, episode two. What they do with that spoiler is super cool. I love that somehow they've actually given a personality to the Mandalorian when you can't see his face, Mm -hmm. you know, like he's funny and there's, there's other groups of characters from previous movies that show up in the second episode. I'll just say that. Uh, It doesn't feel like it's just a TV show. It doesn't feel like episode nine or anything. So, but it's a good, it's a good in between to me. I (laughs) loved episode two. And I'm just so thankful that because part of me was worried. I'm like, ugh. One was good, but it was awesome because of the ending. Yeah. And I'm like, <clears throat> how do you 
keep that momentum going <clears throat> Gosh. without like Sorry. shoehorning in another like, oh my God, moment. Boba Fett's still alive or something. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, uh, I just hope. But now that two has been awesome, I'm... I think the whole season is going to be good. I think two was that one where I'm like, oh, God, can they really keep this going? And I thought it was great. Do you know how many? Is it 10 or 12 episodes? I thought it was like eight. Or is it only eight? Okay. I mean, I have no idea. <clears throat> but in my mind, I was thinking it was eight. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but touching on what you were saying, this also just makes me feel so much better about all of not maybe not you, all I was but just going to say it, most yes. of the upcoming <clears throat> MCU series now i'm like i want falcon and the winter soldier to be like i think next that's going to be awesome it's going to be amazing i'm i'm honestly i can't wait for this uh the what if thing i think that's going to be cool <laughs> that's exactly i don't know if that's coming through but that's, <laughs> that's what, what it sounds like. excuse me sorry um I still don't know. I'm going to watch just because I can't even fathom what it's going to be. I'm, I'm going to watch WandaVision. I'm not. I don't care. Um, I don't care about either of those characters. What else is there? There's the WandaVision. There's Falcon. Well, there's, and, remember, Obi-Wan is... I mean, oh it's God. not Marvel, but the Obi show is coming. <laughs> the Obi show. That's Obi right. Trace. Um, yeah, what else did they... Because Doctor Strange is a movie. Black Panther 2 is coming. That's a movie, obviously. Uh, oh, there's the... Uh, Shane Ms. Marvel, right? Chew, whatever. That's a movie, though. I think. No, I, th- I thought that was a series. I don't know. I think I, it's a series. I, I could be completely wrong. I'm the DC guy, so. But either way, I'm. I'm just. It makes me feel better about all these series. Like I figured, Marvel. Sorry, but Marvel can do no wrong. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, I just don't see myself all getting their TV into a shows, series. Like Agent Carter, nobody cares. Yeah, about I didn't that. care about any of them. And the Netflix shows whatever i didn't watch them so i don't really have an opinion but i didn't feel the need to either but yeah i just i feel so much better about them i don't know what the schedule is like do we know when falcon and winter soldier i believe is next november i could be wrong but i think that far off i think so oh let me see if i can look i was thinking everything was gonna be coming by like the springtime that sucks that's a long ways away uh release date let's see here oh it's just 2020 I mean, I guess that it's expected to be released in late 2020. Dang. It's only six episodes, uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's almost like a long. I kind of yeah, I, I'm kind of okay with that. <clears throat> oh, I can't wait! It's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Mandalorian is awesome. What else did you want to talk about before we get to this stuff? Um. I don't know. I think that's it. Hopefully, we look better. We upgraded our lights. Kind of. I think we might have to work out. I think I need to. I can see my shadow a little bit. Like we, in the sh- 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 shadows. Might Not need the to word. adjust the positioning a little bit, but we got brighter lights. We noticed we were getting darker and darker. The The back wall looked fantastic, but um, we should look fantastic too. We should. And we do. Hopefully we do now. If not, I'll adjust them. It's very bright. I just looked in the uh, Yeah, sun. you can't look right at You him. can't look right at him. The other thing I worry about is the... Um, how do I say this without giving away the... What's it called? The filter that we have on it? Yes, the uh, the diffuser. Yes, the diffuser. <clears throat> it touches the light bulb now because the light bulbs I got are but they're LEDs. bigger. They so don't, they don't put out any heat. They right? don't get hot. Okay, at so all. it's fine. Yeah. If you see us freak out, it'll make for It means our studio's catching on fire. Down. <laughs> and more importantly, my freaking house. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, did you play anything this week besides what we're going to talk about? Um,. So I played a little bit more of a game called, where's my notes? I mean, I love that name. game. Death Stranding. Um, so I got through chapter three. That was the longest chapter by far so far. Yeah. I could have just said so far. By Yeah. No, I was right. By yeah, far so fine. far. And <clears throat> the ending is crazy. You don't see it coming out. When it starts, when the mission starts, you know something's up. That's all I'll say. And I failed multiple times because I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to beat this mission. When you finally figure it out, you, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm just going to say it's unlike the rest of the gameplay so far. It's very stressful. It's, I'll just say it's Mm time-based. You have to go a long ways in a short amount of time to deliver something to a certain spot. And it's 
You're going through the oh that was when I that was when I jumped over the ravine. I think totally uh, <clears throat> not related to anything except Death Stranding, which is what we're talking about. Um, I saw a thing on Twitter. It was like a side by side video kind of thing, <clears throat> and it was showing something from Death Stranding where he's carrying a bunch of stuff and then falls and everything goes everywhere. And then next to it, they had from the Kevin. office, Kevin with his chili. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is perfect. But anyways, continue. So the ending to chapter three is awesome. Then something happens and you, you jump into chapter four, which chapter four was only a half hour long. And 25 minutes of that was cutscene. No. Um, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. No, probably less than 10. Really? Between five and 10, I would say. <clears throat> But I'm not going to spoil anything about it. Kotaku even put out an article just about saying how freaking awesome Chapter 4 is. And when you play this game, because you're going to play this game, when you get there, you'll remember... That, well, I mean, you'll see what happens. You'll be like, holy crap, what the heck is happening? And it's completely unlike everything else. Colin was kind of hitting, hitting at it on his podcast today that he didn't like it because it was so different from everything else. I liked that it was different, um, but it's real quick. So I, now I'm starting to see, and I was texting Sean this too, like... Now I can see why the game is about 40 hours to beat. When it took me 19 and a half hours, yeah, I think I'm 20 hours in now. When it took me basically 19 and a half hours to get through three chapters, I was like, well, okay. But so are you currently still on five? I'm in. I just started. I did the opening cutscene stuff at the beginning of five. Okay. And then I went to bed and then a game we're going to talk about here in a minute came out the next day. So, okay. Um, one other thing I forgot to say last time when we were talking about the uh, cargo and everything. Cause the, the way it works, you, when you're doing your loadout screen, you, you pick your piece of cargo and you pick like your, your items and weapons and container spray and all this stuff. And you say, put on back, carry an arm, put on the side, whatever. Um, you don't want to carry anything in your hands unless it's sometimes you get missions where you have to carry it by hand cause it's fragile or something. Um, but what you can do after you load everything up, I mean, like I said, it might look like you got the Eiffel tower on your back, but what you can do is then you just hit triangle and it's optimized cargo and it goes. <laughs> so it like, cause the way it works, if you're just, and if you're out in the world and you see like a lost piece of cargo and it says, this goes to location X and you put triangle to put it on your back, he just goes boom, and he puts it up. Boom, boom, boom. So if you grab a bunch of stuff, you're like a giraffe again, I tower, whatever I said, <laughs> but then you just go pause cargo menu triangle. And it's like, and it makes it so it's, it's not as tall. It's easier to carry. It just makes it a lot. It's it's that's what I always do is optimize cargo. Yeah. There's no point in trying to be like, well, this weighs this much, so I should put this on my shoulder, and that weighs that much, so that should go on my hip. No, just load up all your stuff, hit optimize, and then you can also put stuff in your, you know, like I said last week, your floating carrier and stuff like that. Once you get it, I've only used that a couple times, um, but so besides like boss fights and any just like forced parts of maybe the rest of the story. Is there ever any reason to fight in this game? Or are you always better off just sneaking <clears throat> around? And There are some times where they force you to fight because you have to go into, it's not even just going into one of the mule camps to get stuff. Sometimes the stuff you have to get is a weapon that the mules, these five or six mules are carrying. So you have uh, to take so them. Now, get it from them. You only need like two of the six, but if you get all six, you get, the higher ranking, you get more likes. Everything is the game, and the game is based on likes. Um, but for the most part, especially in the beginning, you don't want to fight because before you meet people that can build you weapons and stuff, you're just a FedEx guy out there. That if you fight, it's the you know the hand and the 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 hand. And I didn't say this last week either. The hand to hand combat still looks like it did in the trailers. Like it looked clunky and weird. It doesn't feel clunky and weird though. Yeah. Like when you're actually doing it, it. And the, I figured out the slowdown thing happens either when you, A, knock a piece of cargo off of them or knock them out. And when you knock them out, it's not like in Metal Gear where you can knock somebody out and they stay down for like a half hour unless you go kick them and wake them up. They don't stay down that long. And I found that out the hard way because all of a sudden I hear like, and I see the red lines pointing me and I turn around and these three guys I knocked out are up and running at me. I'm like, well, okay, crap. But <laughs> I absolutely love the game. We'll talk about that more here in a little bit. But yeah. So Sean, 
The title of this episode is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Review. I got to figure out how to put the where the colon goes and stuff. Because I think it's Star Wars colon Jedi Fallen Order. But it feels like it should be Star Wars colon Jedi, Jedi colon, dash Fallen yeah, Order. Yeah, exactly. Something period weird. underline. <sighs> so we got Fallen Order, yes. of course. Sean. Yes. I've been talking a lot. What do you think about Jedi Fallen Order? Um... I definitely like it. I think it's the kind of game right now. It's kind of like about how I felt about Bloodborne in the beginning. Now I love Bloodborne. I'm not there with this game yet, but I'm also not all that worried. That's the garage. It's not me. I'm also not really that worried about it getting there. Like, I feel like I know that it will. Um, I want to say this game has issues, and it does, but I think most of the issues I have with it is that I'm just not very good yet. Um, There's parts, so the part, it was in Kashyyyk. There may be minor spoilers. I mean, we're not going to spoil anything too big, but when you're on Kashyyyk, there's a part near the end where you climb up And then you've got like a few blaster guys. You've got a couple stormtroopers with like the the baton, the electric baton thing. And then you got one of those purge trooper guys with like the purpley electric stick thing. And I'm just like, I just started running around. Who do I start? I just exactly. I just started sprinting. I killed the blaster guys because you can usually kill them with like one hit. But man, those purge guys, they kick my butt. Um. I just feel like I don't really know how to fight. Like in Bloodborne, I got to the point where if I took my time, besides like some of the crazy enemies, like I feel like I could usually get past any enemy I see without getting hit, as long as I'm careful. Mm -hmm. This game, it's like I can't kill a single enemy without being hit at least once, unless it's like a blaster trooper that I can just reflect stuff back at him, whatever. But like... I feel like every enemy I come to, I'm going to get hit at least once fighting him. And I'm like, this doesn't seem like this should be the case. So I still feel like I'm doing something <clears throat> wrong. Well, and the difference too, Bloodborne was slower paced. Whereas this, for the most part, I mean, there would be some enemies that would attar- attack quickly. But it's like this, once they start, especially those purge troopers, whether they've got the staff or the two things... They come at you, and you never know if they're going to attack two times or five times or two. That's my main thing. problem. And it's what happens is, so the combat in this is very much focused around parrying, which I am. I am just last night. I finally felt like I started to get the hang of it. You ha- what I figured out is you just have to click L one sooner than you think you do. Like it's not when they're yeah about here. To hit you. It's when yeah. they're like here. Because it takes him a little bit to pull the, to to get the lightsaber into position to block it. And well, stuff. that's what I've noticed. You know those little flying droid guys that shoot the lasers yes. at you. You have they to push like it early. you see it go and it shoots as soon as you see that you, you got to hit L already, even if he's like a hundred feet away. Yeah, and yeah, you got to be super early with those. Um, but yeah, the combat's all about the parrying and stuff, and I'm getting the hang of it. I forget that I have a triangle for a heart attack. I'm almost always just using square. It takes Dodging so long. Dodging square and stuff. The other thing I don't like... And their block meters recharge so quickly, too. That's one thing that... I mean, again, this is more me than the game. There's so many times where I just... I either can't tell the difference or I just forget. What is their block meter and what is their health meter? And I'm like, hit, hit. And I can't tell that they're blocking. I'm like, one more hit and he's dead. Meanwhile, he's been blocking the whole time and all he did was reduce his block meter and he's still alive. Now I'm already thinking about killing that guy, but this guy's still alive. So I got to go back and get him. And it's just, that's the other thing. The lock on in this is weird. Like it seems like it locks on enemies when I'm not, it seems like if I just move the right stick, sometimes it it locks on instead of click, but instead of even, I don't want to be a lot. When you've got four or five guys around you, I don't want to be locked on. I'm, I'm flipping and I'm, I'm rolling and I'm doing all this and I'll just try to get to a blaster guy. Like try to get the weak guys first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the lock on in this is so weird. It just, it just, it seems like it jumps too quickly or it locks on when I don't want it to. This game is incredibly difficult. It is. I've yeah. heard some people saying you should play it on hard. Otherwise, it's too easy. And I'm like, what it's game definitely are you not, playing? Yeah. You know? And 
This game is a mix between <clears throat> Star Wars, Uncharted, and Bloodborne. Yes. Flat out. And I didn't, like, I had heard people saying Sekiro about the combat going into this because of, like, the sword playing stuff. And I, I haven't played Sekiro, but I think it's the same way. Like, if somebody kills you, you got to get back to them, kill them to get your blood echoes or whatever. Same as it is in Bloodborne. So that's why I say Bloodborne, because it's more about that. I didn't realize that was in this game at all. Um, but yeah, that's what this, there's, this is, un, this is Uncharted with lightsabers and yeah. Bloodborne style of difficulty, Sekiro combat, along with the getting your blood echoes back and stuff like that. The only good thing in this, though, is... And Hollow Knight wasn't like this either. You had to kill your shadow thing still. You don't have to kill the guy that yeah, kills you. just hit him once. You just run up to him. As long as you get a strike in on him, <clears throat> it slows down. It says XP and health are, you know, filled back up. A lot of times it seems like I didn't have to go very far because usually when I was dying, it felt... There was a couple times where I was like, oh my God, you're freaking kidding me. That it was so far away from the last time I did a meditation thing. And there's no checkpoints that I can find. It's just... The meditation. Yeah, it's just the meditation spots. I'm like, oh my God, this is so frustrating. Um, what else? I got a lot of notes. Oh, my bad. Um, I, I, there are plenty of good things about this game, so I do feel like just kind of getting the bad things out of the way. Um, uh, one thing I've noticed, again, maybe it's me doing something wrong. I've got the thing where you can hold triangle and you do like a dash attack. Mm-hmm. That works maybe 25% of the time. It's I so feel like slow. most of the time, but it's not even that it's slow. It's like I'll see an enemy over there and I'm like, hold triangle. <clears throat> and he like dashes up to them and then he like doesn't attack or he attacks and he misses. And all of a sudden I'm like right next to them. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like square, square, square. And then right. I've got to start attacking. But like, I feel like half the time when I do it, he doesn't actually attack or maybe he's attacking and missing somehow. That drives me nuts. Um, the part that I was telling you was driving me nuts so I went back to Zepho. Um, I found so you know those big guys you can fight the big mm-hmm. like boom, they're, they're like the, the Cyclops and exactly. the old God of War games. Yeah, um, I found one that I guess is supposed to be like a boss because they actually oh. have his name. Okay, so this is not what was frustrating you, I guess. And he's down in like a no. I got frustrated with puzzle stuff, but I'll he was down in like a pit area. Oh no, I didn't find this. And I did kill Ogdo Bagado. I you went did. back and killed him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is called, I can't remember what those guys are called, but this guy is called Rabid such and such. Oh. And he's just a lot faster and a lot more powerful. <clears throat> and he killed me. So I had to get my blood echoes back from him. And I literally, I could jump down in this pit and hit him and I would sprint away and he would catch me. And it's one of those things really? where he's like, boom, and knocks me down. Boom. As soon as I get back. And they up. can. Well, Boom. and they can hit three you when hits, you're down, too. Three hits, yes. Three hits, and I'm dead. And I don't. I never have time to use the stim packs. I can't yeah. run away because like, I'm down, and he doesn't let me back up. I died to him like five or six times, and I eventually just had to say, whatever. That, whatever. Just keep I'll my XP. Yeah. I can't do this, so <clears throat> whatever. Um, I just got... I'm trying to think of where I died. Oh, I just got another upgrade for BD, where you can do the up yeah. zip line thing. Um, I got to like some shortcut where I wound back up in the area where you can do that. And then I died and then I hadn't meditated in a while. I'm like, that's, that's where I quit. Um, but that was after <coughs> wasting a lot of time trying to get my blood echoes back from that one guy. Right. Um, now I wonder where that was. Hmm. It's near, um, so where the wrecked ship is. Okay. I don't know how you got there. The way I got there, I come out of this like stream that like leads yeah. back to that open area. Okay. And to your left is one of those big. They're walking around guys. in like the yeah. ring thing. Yeah. So there's a part where you can climb up, and then you go into like a cave, mm-hmm. and that that takes you to them. Okay. Um, but I mean, don't even bother. <clears throat> You'll you're dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I it's definitely fun. It's weird because it's. The kind of game I find myself thinking about it a lot, and I enjoy myself when I play it, but it's also the kind of game where, like, I had about an hour and a half earlier before I came over here where I could have played, but I just didn't. And it's the kind of thing where it's almost like, I almost feel like I can't accomplish enough in just, like, an hour of this game 
for it to even seem worth it to play. The, it's almost the, like I need to be able to carve out at least two hours yes. straight. Otherwise, I don't even feel like <clears throat> starting it. The the meditation spots are pretty spread out, it, it, it seems, for the most part. And you can get, not really lost. Well, no, you can get lost. Because here's, I'm going to go into some of my gripes. The map oh, in so this, one last thing. Yeah, go. What I don't like, again, maybe I just suck at this game. I don't think I'm really getting much benefit out of these skill points. The health upgrades and the defense upgrades, those are nice. But like a lot I did of the, all the health first. Because I was oh, like, yeah, so this, did I. But like, yeah. I'm like, uh, have you found any stim packs? I think I found, do you get them, is it like a heart piece or you just find one? You just find one. Okay, then no, I've not found any. Okay, there's, I've gotten three by exploring. Once you get. So you've got five now? Yeah. I'm still on two. I know. So that'll make a big difference. But like, <laughs> holy I'm, crap. Once you get the force push, do you have force push? Yeah. These aren't spoilers. This, I mean, it, you get force put, force push, force pull, and you start with slow down. There's areas I well, got. You don't have pull yet. Oh, well, I guess I'm not too far off from that. Then you but. might, because I think you might need to get pull. I can't remember. Do you get that on, is that Zepho? I don't remember at this point. Okay. So you've finished Zepho and you're already onto a new planet? Yeah, but I've explored okay. Zepho. So there's, if you ever see a yellow. Yeah. It, it's a yellow you treasure can go chest. There. Oh no! Wh- no, oh, no, no, no. Instead of white or red, they're yellow. No, um, I've gotten three. So now I feel like okay. Now, but I'm still at the point where I'm going to be honest. I want to put this to the easiest difficulty at this point because I've game been is, tempted. I haven't done it yet, but I've been tempted. This game is so freaking difficult. I think the only reason I beat Agdo Bagdo, whatever his name is, <laughs> is I saw somebody say on Twitter like, if you jump through the hole, and you, you can get one hit on him. That it takes, takes like half his a life. Third, yeah. And then I was like, and this was, but even when I, had, I did that, I fought him. What I thought was more or less perfect. I kept Were dodging him. Were you ever able to stuff, hit his but... tongue? No, I don't know. You could. Supposedly you can hit his tongue. And they, they said if you once you scan, and every time you kill an enemy in this, you scan them, and it'll tell you what their strengths are, weaknesses. And it said something about his tongue. And I've seen people on Twitter talk about his tongue, too. I'm like, no, I didn't even. Can you, I've like, never grab read. it and like, cut it? I don't, I don't know. But yeah. Um, but yeah, get the stim packs. Well, so what I was going to say is what I really want, I just want something that makes my lightsaber more powerful. I want to be able to do more damage with it. I don't care if yeah, I can you don't now upgrade your, do yeah. two strong attacks right in a row because I barely ever use one. Like Most of these things I don't really use. I don't really need. This was one of the things Greg said in his when they were talking last week. In his review, it was like, the skill tree, some of the stuff is good, but there's a lot of stuff in there you just don't care about. Yeah. To be fair, I felt the same way about God of War. There was a lot of stuff in there that I was just like, well, I've got the XP. I'll just unlock. I'm never going to use this thing. Yeah, yeah. And in this, obviously, if I think i do want to go for the platinum i'm not sure at this point i'll get into that but obviously you have to unlock everything yeah um, and some of them most of the things are one there's a lot that are two there's a few that are three i don't think i've saved up for any of the three skill points yet i don't think i've even seen any of those yet. well yeah because they you want you yeah, know, yeah you unlock more as you go up so where i am right now had you already gotten more stim packs no i didn't get them till yesterday okay so yeah. i don't feel that bad though. so i think there's one part uh, when you land on, there's, I got two in Bagano. Uh-oh. There's one like where you land, you go, you don't go to the right, which I think is where Agdo Bagdo is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You go left and you kind of make your way around and really just look for areas that are yellow on the map. Yeah. And I'll bitch about the map here in a second. But then there's a part where you, you go over there. And I just never saw it before, but there's a wall run part where you like run, 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 jump. And then there's a big pit that it looks like it seems like the only time you can die or get hurt in this is if you just fall off a cliff where there's nothing to land. But this was so far down that I was like, I don't think I should go down there. But then I looked over to the side, like down in the pit and I saw there was all the vines and stuff. So I was like, I'm going to run and jump and grab it. And as I'm going down there, there was a yellow stim pack there. Boom. I was like, Oh my God, I finally got one. Thank you. Hmm. God. Cause I've seen YouTube videos of people that have like six, there and i'm like what i've still got two how was wow. how, this guy is, i don't know how and they could have been super far in the game i don't know but um the map i friggin the map sucks so i hated the map i've since come around on it i think it's done well in terms of showing you where you can go and where you haven't been what's I blocked like that. what's open now what i don't the green like, red or the yellow what i don't like and the main thing has been on zepho 
it's almost like there's just too much. And no matter what, it's tough when you've got just that much stuff, it's tough to make a good map. And I think they do as good a job as they possibly can. But like when I'm trying to get around like Bagano and even Kashyyyk wasn't that bad, but Zepho with all the stupid lifts there, are, it's just huge. And I'm like, it looks so overwhelming. If I'm here and, and I got to get over there and I'm like, Okay, so I like find where I'm trying to go and try to work backwards. I'm like, eh, if I go back there, no, that's taking me that way. What if mm-hmm. I go? If I go this way, okay, and then if I get, so I can get to there from here, and then once I'm there, and it's just like mind-boggling. But these maps are huge. I don't know that I have a problem with the map so much as just it's tough to show that big of an area in well, a nice, clean method. And the worlds. At first, I was disappointed when it seems like, I don't know if there's any more planets. I haven't seen any more. Okay. But it seems like the planets that we've seen might be the only ones. I think that Darth Mir is probably the last one you go to. Although, somebody was saying, you got to go there and just look around. You'll find something that's awesome. I'm not going there because they were saying, you're going to die a lot. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go through the story. Whatever it is, I don't need it that bad. Don't right. hit the comments. Um, I, I hate the map. It, it's like I hated God of War's map. That was really the only part of that game I didn't like. But I didn't like it just because it was just like, it wasn't useful. It was almost too little information. And you couldn't tell where paths were to get from the, you know, from his house to this forest or up to the mountain. It was just like, it was just like a map. You know what I mean? Like there was almost like it was too, like, and there's trees everywhere and it's all green. I'm like, I don't know where to go. This is the other thing where it's just, I like that it's BD1 doing a hollow map for you. Like, the concept of that is cool, but then it's like, especially with these places where you get these sliding things, and I'll talk about that in a second, and you look at the map, and you can tell it's a slide thing, and it's like, I have to look at the map, and then kind of move it, and then twist to see, okay, so he's going, okay, wait, and then it, it's, th- I thought it went that way, no, it goes here, I just hate the map, it drives me nuts, I like the way they color code stuff, I will say that, yellow, you haven't been yet, green is now available, because you got a new power up, red, you can't go here yet, yeah. I like that, that's good, that'll help you a lot, because you have to... You have to get, of course, if I get the platinum, you got to get all the treasures. You got to go 100% of the map on every planet, blah, blah, blah. I don't know that I'm getting platinum this game. When I looked at the trophy list at first, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it, but I don't know anymore. Um, After about an hour in this game, I was like, I don't like this. I want to play Death Stranding. I was... Not I was sold on it in the beginning, but I was like, I want to the talk about it on the podcast. Day I played. I yeah. was like, okay, I'm getting it now, and I still don't get it. Yeah, but I'm getting it. Um, but I didn't go back to Death Stranding. I was like, I'm gonna see this through. It's a freaking Star Wars game. It actually dropped on a Metacritic. It's now 81, which is still fine. It started at 84. It's at 81 now. Um, but now I'm to the point where I'm like, I, I get. I'm about 10 hours in. I think. I'm getting the hang of the combat. Like I said, I kind of am figuring out the parrying. But again, if you got multiple people coming at you, it's like, I'm just going, I don't know what to do. I got to run away. And I just keep like, slow down. I, I wish you could slow them down and get more than one hit. See, what I don't like, I've tried slowing down. I get the, why you can't. The, the guys that I keep talking about. The Purge. Purge troopers. And it's like the guy with like the purple electric staff thing. He's like running at me and I'm like, slow. I'm like, I'm going to run around him. And I feel like he's Superman or something because I'm like running around him and he's like keeping up with me. I'm like, you're supposed to be slow. You should still be facing that way while I get around. It's almost like the the slowdown doesn't affect them for as long or something. I don't know that for sure, but it feels that way. I don't end up using the slowdown that much. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe that's why I'm not. See, I never use the, and I haven't really used the push that much. It doesn't. It's like, oh, right. And then they're like, right back. It doesn't. It yeah. sounds like they're like, Ooh, and then like birds flying <laughs> around their head, and you can run up and, <laughs> yeah, and they're they just throw like, up like in Ugh. Street Fighter. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things I really hated at first, but I'm getting the hang of it now, because again, I said this is very Uncharted esque and Tomb Raider esque. When you jump either onto a rope or a wall, the fact that you have to jump with X and then you have to push L two to grab it. Right. Doesn't, why doesn't he just it's grab? It's stupid. A... Why wouldn't? Why I'm jumping into the rope? Why the heck? Do I have to push? Well, L2 you don't to have to hit L two to grab a rope. Oh, you don't. It's just but the you wall do stuff. the walls. Okay. You do. Well, yeah. still, it's just it's it's. And I think even then, because one time I forgot, it's almost like he grabs and he's like, whoa, whoa. And it it's gives like, you a second. Yeah. It says L two to grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least they're. I but don't it like does a, seem weird. Why? 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 Why put that just mechanic in there? Yeah. yeah. It, it's like I just wonder what play testers were like. This is a great game mechanic. I'm glad I have to push an extra button to grab onto this wall that I just jumped into and did grab onto for a half a second. Right. And then I got to 
Like if Cal, it's it's a video game, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. I do feel like there's something. I feel like there's something missing in this, and maybe it's a power up that I don't know about. I feel like there should be some kind of, and maybe it's because I just played Death Stranding. There should be some kind of a Jedi Force sense thing or something. I don't need the little that that maps out the terrain or something, but there should be some way to like. Um, and it well, would another thing that would be nice, and would show you like there's a treasure chest over here, or just something. Yeah, that'd like be nice. you can't see treasure chests on the map at all. I hate no, that. and you don't see the white dots. Yeah, until you're like basically on top, on top of, of it. it. So, so I'm running around a lot of this, like running against walls, and like, is this is that door? Can I open that door that looked just like the other door that I could open? No. Okay, whatever. What I don't like, and it seems like the game would be perfect for it, even though the your opportunities are few and far between. You should be able to do stealth, stealth kills in this. There's there no are times stealth. where there's like why can't a stormtrooper and walk? I like slowly yes. walk up to him. He's and like, he's like, oh, oh, the Jedi. I'm like, yeah. I didn't even make a noise. Yes. Like, are you a Jedi? What is this? Like, I should just be able to go up to him and just, you, and just you stealth, it. stealth lightsaber him in the back. I, and yeah, I feel like there's a lot. I've, I, I feel like this will hopefully get a sequel. I know I'm just getting all my bad stuff out of the way. The other thing I wish, which doesn't really make sense, but selfishly I want it, it'd be nice to have like a blaster. There are so many times where there's enemies far away, and I'm like, can you shoot me, please, so I can so hit I it back can at you and you, kill you? Yeah. I'm like, I see you, and you're so far away, and I can't do anything about it right. unless they're shooting at me. But Well, and it's annoying when they're so far away shooting at you, and you got a purge trooper going, wham, wham, wham. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, and there's no like in, when you get hit, there's no invincibility that I can tell. It's like if you get hit, he can any anybody yeah. can hit you right away again. But yeah, you brought up a perfect point. There should be stealth in this. There should be circle if you're not moving. Circle should either be you know, if you push a direction and it, it should do the dodge thing or whatever, or it should or you, you should, should be able to hold it to There should be a button that makes you crouch walk. Yes. Stealth, I, I thought that exact same thing when I was playing through it. I agree hundred percent. There's a lot of sliding in this game, which is was giving me PTSD to the thing I hated the most about Uncharted 4. I loved Uncharted 4. The sliding parts in that game were ridiculous. When it got down to when I was getting close to the very end of the game, and there's a p- spot where you have to like slide, jump. Yeah, slide, jump. Slide, jump, grapple, swing. Slide, jump, grapple, swing. And you have to do it picture perfect. And a lot of the times the way the camera is, you can't tell where you were supposed to grapple to until it was too late. It was just, it was bad camera work. This isn't really camera work, but it's like when you're sliding on ice, I feel like I'm holding right as much as I can. And this dude's just like, me. There's one part on Zepho. It must have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're on ice. Where there's like a hairpin turn. Yeah. And once you go around that turn, you need to jump and grab a rope, I think. I just kept sliding off the edge. You have to basically I, I make yourself getting, go into the wall. Right. I was yeah. only getting to the point where I jumped to grab the rope once out of every like four times. I was swearing. Because I, I kept just flying. I'm like, I'm holding right and I'm holding down right. to like slow myself down. And, oh, and can I still you slow go, yourself down? I don't know, but oh, okay. it seems like you should be able to. So yeah. I'm holding down and right. Like to, back. Yeah. yeah. And I just back into right the off the edge every time. Um, so that gives me PTSD with Uncharted And the part four. where you're sliding and the gears are turning and you have to slow them and then jump through the yeah. opening in the gear. Like, oh, God. And, and when you die or you fall off a cliff, you go back to the top of the hill. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Um, I don't really like the puzzle solving thing that I did. Like, we talked about the three ball thing. Um, that wasn't that bad. But then there's a part towards the end. Have you done... Wait, you don't have force pull yet. Mm-mm. Okay, so you haven't got to the annoying part. Right. There's one part on, Ze- I think it's in Zepho, or it's in Kashyyyk. Oh, no, it's in Kashyyyk, the Meek Truck Temple or whatever it's called. I'm saying all these things. I don't know if these exist in Star Wars, and you're like, dude, don't talk about that. I don't I don't know what they are. They're just, we're not doing spoilers, but just the gameplay. There's a puzzle there once you get the four. There's, there's a couple puzzles there that involve fire and water and getting fire not through, because if you try to get fire through water, it douses it like it should and it puts it out, but you need the fire to solve puzzles. And then you get to this part where it's just like, you have to raise this thing. And then you, I'm like, I went, I was so, because I couldn't figure out anything to do. I was like, maybe I'm missing something. So I went on the map. Here's a yellow thing. Okay, go up here. I did so much exploring, got like some freaking. well, you got a new switch for your lightsaber. Okay, cool. It doesn't help. And I got all the way back there and I was like, I'm still here and I don't know what to do. I'm so freaking frustrated. Like, it it reminds me of the bad God of War puzzles from old. Like there was remember the God of, remember God of War one, 
I'm not this does this puzzle's not in there, but this was the level of frustration I was feeling. When you have to kick the block like two times while the spikes are getting ready to come back up and kill you, and you have to do it perfectly to jump on the box, to jump up to the ledge so you don't get killed. Do you remember that? It was the most frustrating the only God of War, God of War puzzle I remember. I think it was God of War three. And it's the one where you're in like the weird like garden kind of area with all the optical yes. illusions of the stairs yes. and, it, and you gotta line everything yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only that, that puzzle was, sticks out to me. Yeah. I mean it was cool. It was God, cool. It was yeah. frustrating. Um there's so much backtracking in this game. I feel like when I get to the point where it's like you did this or you beat this person or you solved this puzzle, okay, now it's time to go back to the ship. I'm like I'm looking at the map and I'm and if that's the other thing you it's there's sometimes where you feel like you should be able to push up on the map to like go up a level but where you're at there's not a lo- another level yeah. so you try to like move the map but then it's like all I see is my icon is way over there and I can't figure out so I guess I'll just go that general direction there's a lot of backtracking it annoys me but the thing that really got to me was two nights ago when I was playing and I tweeted this that I was actually thinking like maybe I do need to get a PS4 Pro for this last year if this is how these games are going to run and it happened a little bit last night too but two nights ago, so Sunday night when I was playing, I don't know what was going on, but I would get to like a new door that I hadn't gone in yet, and I would run up to it, and it would go and it just stop, and it would stop, it would freeze. Has it happened to you? A couple times. It's, yeah. It for like I'm like please God, to twenty don't seconds. Free, like, yeah, I'm like, but I'm like if I just I lost still, everything. I can move the camera around, so I'm like it hasn't frozen yet. But there was one time that had to have been about forty five seconds, and I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And then I would get through. Then it would finally load, and you'd go through there. But it's like this game isn't that graphically impressive. Like, I don't know what is going so on. So that's the thing. I've had that. Now, what I will say is I haven't had any graphical performance issues that affect the gameplay. Usually it's like during cutscenes, all of a sudden somebody will just appear. You're like, you weren't there a half a second. It's like, I've it's had just all this weird like pop in I've had stuff. enemies pop in when I'm playing. I haven't had anything that affects like the actual gameplay, so I'm okay with it. But... My God, this is up there with Breath of the Wild in yeah. terms of how long it takes after you die to get back into the game. And sometimes there's been at least one time in you know the few days I've had this where I've stopped playing because I kept dying and I just got sick of waiting to get back into the game. If yeah. you can get right back in it like that, I probably would have kept playing. But I'm just like, I'm sick of this like minute long wait every time I die to get back into the game. And that was one of the times I stopped playing. It was just because of that. And that's why Sony keeps talking, and Xbox has too, about next gen, you're not going to have load times, or you're going to have the most minuscule load times you can imagine. Yeah. But yeah, it drives me nuts. Uh, So yeah, I think that's my bad stuff out of the way. I do like this game. I'm not saying I don't like it, but I definitely don't love it at this point. It ha- no, it's. I think that... 81 on Metacritic is about right. Yeah. It's not going to be my game. I mean, unless it really finishes strong, it's not going to be my game of the year. It'll yeah. be, I mean, it's probably top five, but I wouldn't say I'm disappointed because it is good, and I think it's going to get better as I get better. But I, it's not going to be my game of the year. Not that that alone is any, you know, it's a disappointment no. because it's not game of the year, but it's it's about... It, Without getting my hopes up too high, it's more or less what I thought it would be, I guess. But it's not exceeding my expectations. Yeah. It's just so weird. It definitely has fallen below my expectations where Death Stranding blew my expectations out of the water. I just didn't expect that at all. And maybe that game will, maybe it'll dip, but it's just, that game has gotten better and better and better. This has kind of been (laughs) the same thing all the way through, some dips when I'm really frustrated, but then then it raises up a little bit as I start to finally get the handle on the combat and stuff. Um what I will say, and I may regret these words, but it kind of makes me, I know you want me to play Death Stranding, and I'm sure I will. You're going to go back to Bloodborne? It kind of makes me want to play Bloodborne again. But I would probably just start over in Bloodborne mm-hmm. because I don't know what I was doing, and I think I screwed up, like I was saying before. I think With I screwed upgrades. up my yeah. game. Yeah, so I would probably just start over, but it makes me want to play Bloodborne again. Yeah couple other quick things here that I wrote down so I don't forget about it. The opening is very Uncharted-ish in the best way possible. Like, the opening to this game is awesome. And when I was going yeah. through that, I was like, this is crazy. There's You're you're getting used to the platforming and the, 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 the L2 to grab. And you're, there's a, there's, it's a big set piece thing. It's And there's an emotional moment at the beginning, too. You weren't really 
It wasn't like it really hit you, but it was like, oh, man. You know. What I kind of wonder is... But I think the story is awesome. I will say that. The story is good. I feel like this game has to end with Cal dying. Because if not, who is Where he? Does Where he does he go? Did he go? Like, yeah. Does he just... I don't know. Maybe he's really Kylo Ren. Wait, no. This is after episode three, not after episode six. Uh, yeah, he would... Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of a way he could somehow be tied in, and there's just no, there's no big names in the Star Wars universe from that period where you don't know their backstory. You know, like right. at some point, whether in this game or not, he has to die, right? Because this is five years after episode after Order sixty six, after Episode three. That means there's about fifteen years or so, I think, until a new hope takes place. So obviously, he's not around when when we see the first star wars movie so yeah i don't know the other thing um this i won't spoil because i thought it was pretty cool not the cameo that i told you i mean i didn't tell you but i told you one was coming not that one but the next one of those boss fights on kashik i went from oh my god it's to oh crap real quick when i thought there was another cameo, and it turned out that it was not. When you're releasing Wookiees, remember okay. the boss fight. I remember releasing the Wookiees, and when you're you're like boop 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 to open the things, and behind you you see a thing slide up, and somebody comes out of there. But, oh, it, but, it, but it's yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. I but was like, not, oh my yes, God, it's... Yes, okay. And then I was like, oh crap, I have to fight. <laughs> this like, is not... <laughs> pew, 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 pew. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, okay. I completely... <laughs> yes. There's... I don't think I've seen any more of that. You There's two of them. I mean, at right, least two. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. There is another little mini boss. Not even a mini boss. It, it had a life bar, but it's not like this big giant creature thing that... There's actually two of them. It's, it's some part when you go... You leave Kashyyyk when you go back to Kashyyyk, I think, is when it when this little fight happens. Yeah. And that was almost tougher because it was like, it, it reminds me of fighting the purge troopers. Cause it's like something that's your size and yeah. it's quick and it's got different attacks that you've never had to deal with before and stuff. And it was, it was cool, but no, I completely, yeah, that's, but that makes, uh, we, we can talk about it all. <laughs> Cause I don't remember if that thing was bad and then made good when we, I mean, it wasn't it. Right. It was a. It's just. It's another. Yeah. But it's an empire. I guess. I, I just. I need to go back and watch that again. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm gonna see it through. I'm gonna beat it. But at this point, do I feel like I'm gonna go find every chest and unlock every part of the map and do all that? If I do platinum this, hopefully this game gets better from here to where I want to platinum platinum it. But I do know for sure once I beat this game, it seems like it's 15 hours or so. Once I beat it. I'm not going to go for the platinum then, unless I am blown away by these last few hours. Um, yeah, I can't imagine. I'm going back to this enough to platinum. Sure. Yeah. If I were to score it right now, it's probably right now for about a seven point five for me. Yep, that's what I was going to say. I wish it was a nine, but to me, it's not right now. And I feel like I'm in the vast minority here. A lot. Everybody seems to love it, and I get it. Like it's really good. I could see, it's not like I'm just over it. I could see it getting yeah, exactly. to a nine by the time I'm done with it, but it's, yeah, seven and a half or eight right now. Are right, you want to get the news of the week one hour in? Sure. XO19 was this last week, and while we're not the biggest Xbox fans, we do want to talk about it. Uh, some of the highlights here, I think this came from Tech Radar. There are big updates coming to Project X Cloud. I thought I was going to burp, and it didn't happen. The vast majority of the big news from XO19 revolves around Microsoft's cloud gaming platform, Project xCloud. We'll talk more about cloud gaming here on the next item, and I cannot wait. At the show, Microsoft announced it would be, on, it would be adding 50 new games to the service from 25 partners that include Madden 20, Devil May Cry 5, and Tekken 7. We also learned that xCloud would be available on, available on Windows 10 PCs in 2020 and will soon support additional game pads from third-party controller manufacturers. They actually announced that you can use the DualShock 4 with it, and people at the conference almost booed this guy off the stage. I'm like, don't, don't be that much of a fanboy. 
50 new games are coming to Xbox Game Pass. If you've been running low on games to download from Xbox Game Pass, you'll be pleased to know that Microsoft announced at the show that 50 new games will be available on the service shortly. Immediately after the show, you'll be able to download, which is now, Rage 2, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, while in the near future you'll see Darksiders 3, The Witcher 3, and Final Fantasy 7 through 15 available on Game Pass. Also, it's not here, but I don't know why they didn't put this in here, but xCloud is, seems like it's going to be part of Game Pass. So it's like Sony's going to have to do something big with PlayStation Now going into next gen because Microsoft keeps putting more and more and more into Game Pass. And I can't for the life of me fathom how it makes financial sense, but obviously it does or they would not keep making it better and adding stuff to it. Like, I don't know how 10 bucks a month makes up for not selling these games, you know? I just, I don't get it. I mean, I don't get the finance behind it, but I know when, like, ne- Netflix, what was I going to say? Oh, did you ever oh, redeem say, PS Now? I still have it, okay. no. Um, but I know when, like, the iTunes store was around. I'm like, I don't want to spend a dollar for a song and $10 uh, for true. an album, whatever. Yeah. But ever since then, whether it's Apple Music or now I'm on Amazon Music, yeah. I pay ten dollars a month to stream, and I, I don't think twice about it. No, it's like, but Netflix, I'm like, I don't yeah. want to. Like, I would never spend that much if I was just downloading albums or songs. Right. And so I get it. They're getting. I'm getting way more than I would if I was only buying specific songs or albums. I'm getting way more doing it this way, but. I, I'm spending more, but I'm getting way more for my money. Now that's from the consumer side. I don't know that they're getting yeah. any more money, but I mean, I, you got to you got to think maybe there's people out there that subscribe to Game Pass that really only would get one game a year, maybe two, right? And instead, they just say I'll pay 120 bucks a year. So maybe they are getting 60 bucks more from some people. I just I don't know, but obviously it's working, or they wouldn't keep doing it, right? Um, what else? Black Friday deals. As you'd expect, Microsoft plans on going hard for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. This year, U.S. gamers can expect to see the Xbox One Sad Edition for 150 which is what it should have been to begin with. That's me editorializing. Which comes bundled with Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Fortnite Battle Royale with the legendary rogue Spider Knight sin. skin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. The Xbox One X will get a minor price drop down to three forty nine ninety nine, and will be available inside a number of will be available will be available inside a number of bundles, including Gears Five Special Edition. While the Xbox One controllers get a twenty dollar price drop from November twenty fourth to December second. In terms of game deals for Black Friday, Microsoft used XO nineteen to announce that Forza Horizon Four, Sea of Thieves Anniversary Edition, State of Decay Two, and Hellblade: Senua's so Sacrifice will all be fifty percent off this holiday season they will also be discounting gears 5 a smaller amount of 33 percent on black friday but again if you have game pass you don't have to buy gears 5 in game news there was a lot of games here i'm going to run through this Everwild was announced from rare it looks like it's some kind it's their new game it looks like it's some kind of a nature exploration thing tell me why it was announced from don't nod uh the life is strange uh the studio that did life is strange and it stars the first transgender protagonist in a game Grounded was announced from Obsidian, which is some kind of co-op survival game with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids feeling. You're like small little people in a big world. I don't know. It's coming out spring 2020. Bleeding Edge from Ninja Theory was announced to be coming out March 24th, 2020. If you don't remember, this is the game from Ninja Theory that did Senua's Sacrifice that is like a 4v4 Overwatch thing, except it's melee combat. Mm -hmm. Does nothing for me at all, but some people are excited. I just... I don't know how you go from a game like Hellblade's newest sacrifice, which Logan, I still need to play to this. I just don't know how that works. Uh, they did a new trailer for ages of empire four sea of thieves, sea bound souls out 11, 20 master chief collection is finally coming to PC on December 3rd with halo reach. That's when it'll be available on the master chief collection on Xbox as well. Yakuza zero Kiwami one and Kiwami two will hit game pass in 2020. Minecraft Dungeons is coming out April 2020. This is also coming to Switch, PC, obviously, and PS4. I'm surprised. I thought this would be the game where Microsoft was like, no, screw you. If you want to play more Minecraft, get it on our system. (laughs) Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 and 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue will be out in 2020. Wasteland 3 is coming out May 19th, 2020. I don't know there's really anything to add there. Um, But it, it seems like Xbox fans are pumped up and I'm happy. Good. It just, it doesn't speak to me, but I'm happy everybody is happy. 
Speaking of cloud gaming, Stadia launched today as we're recording this. And the reviews are horrible. Shocking everybody, meaning nobody. Uh, one thing they did do, they did at least increase their launch lineup to include all these games. So they added 10 more titles. The titles available on Stadia now are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Attack on Titan Final Battle 2, Destiny 2 The Collection, available in Stadia Pro only apparently. Farming Simulator 2019, that'll move units. That'll put butts in seats. Final Fantasy 15, Football Manager 2020, Grid 2019, Guilt, Just Dance 2020, Kine, Metro Exodus, Mortal Kombat 11, NBA 2K20, Rage 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, that was another thing. In the Xbox thing, they said Streets of Rage 4 will come to Game Pass in 2020. So apparently it's not coming out this year. I mean, this year's almost over, but it mm -hmm. seems like it's officially coming out next year. Samurai Showdown will be available on Stadia Pro, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Thumper, Tomb Raider 2013, Trials Rising, and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, so that's all cool and everything, but remember how when Stadia was announced, they were talking about all these cool features it was going to have? Mm -hmm. Let's see what it's missing. This comes from Kotaku. Stream Connect, State Share, and Crowd Play, the main features that allow players to join in one another's games and make Stadia more than just glorified remote play. I ex quote, I expect the first game with St Stream Connect to launch by the end of the year, said Andro Dorchniev. State is, uh, did you think I got that right? Well, you didn't get the first name right. <laughs> I said Andrew. <laughs> Andre Dorachniev, Stadia, Stadia's director of product. The games that support State Share and Crowd Play will be released next year. Okay. Stadia's achievement system. The service will still record you when you hit various milestones in games, but you won't actually get notifications for them or see them displayed anywhere until, quote, shortly after launch. The ability to use existing Chromecast Ultras to play games. At launch, only the Chromecast only the Chromecast Ultras that ship with Stadia controllers will have the updated firmware required to stream games. Quote, we will be updating the existing CC Ultras over the air soon after launch. This really blows my mind. It's, it's a freaking firmware update. Yeah. Family sharing. While parents will still be able to control what their kids can access on their accounts, multiple people in the same house won't be able to share games on the service until later on. Quote, but it's a high priority feature. We're planning to launch early next year, Dorachniev said. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy passes. This was one of the coolest things of this. Buddy passes. Guess what? <laughs> it ain't there either. Founders editions of Stadia are supposed to come with buddy passes so that people can give a friend a three-month Stadia subscription and play games with them. But these passes won't actually be sent out until weeks after launch. Quote, you'll get your buddy pass about two weeks after you receive your bundle, barring some unknown unknowns popping up, which never happens, said Barry Lee, who works on Stadia's game publishing side. And last but definitely not least, the freaking Stadia controller, at least for some people. Everyone who pre-ordered Stadia will get their codes to sign on to the service starting November 19th and will be able to play on their phones or Chrome desktop browser with a keyboard and mouse. <laughs> However, the packages containing the controllers and Chromecast will have staggered shipping sent out in the sent out in the order that pre-orders were received. Quote, I ordered my Stadia's Founders Edition in June, and my delivery delivery date shows November 20th to 21st, Lee said, offering an example. Another person commenting on the Ask Me Anything said that currently they currently had an estimated ship date of late November, early December. Quote, this, this, is, this is so, Google is so out of touch. Quote, moving atoms is a bit more complicated and less predictable than moving bits, Durachniev said. <laughs> so... So the actual delivery date will depend on the mail truck, traffic lights, etc. It will depend on the traffic lights when you'll get your Stadia Founders Edition. He can't be serious. <laughs> it's just such an out-of-touch quote. Um, yeah, depending on the lights we hit, you may get it mid-November or mid-December, depending on how many traffic lights the trucks hit. I think he's way. trying to be funny, and he's just not Durachniev. Um... What I've heard from people saying is that it looks good playing on Google Pixel. It looks bad when you play on a TV. Um, one person, I think it was Greg, actually said Switch games look better than this. And the Switch is supposed to be so underpowered and everything. Um, you can't even redeem codes for games or buy games and stuff unless you go to Stadia's website on your PC. You can't do it on your phone. You can't do it on TV. You can't do it anywhere. Uh, and this came out. This is a tweet I saw today. Uh, if you're playing a game at 1080p on Stadia, you're going to burn through 100 megs per minute. So, goodbye to your data caps. 
Who the hell? This is what I'm so confused about this thing. Obviously, it's a horrible launch. They shouldn't have called it a launch. They should have called it beta. They should have called it early access or something. Yeah, what? What? What was the big rush to get this out? It is nowhere near ready. And no. It just looks so bad. Like they're and America's doomed. not ready they're for it. They're screwed already. Like, oh God. It's it, the the thing is, like, I really don't I really don't know who this is for because do you think mom and dad know that about Google Stadia? No. Do you know who knows about Google Stadia? People that already have consoles. Yeah. Now you can tell me. Yeah, but what if I'm like traveling and I want to play Red Dead 2 or something and I'm not going to bring my PC or my super powerful laptop to play Red Dead 2? Okay, but that's... V- <laughs> I think most people, if they travel a lot and they want to play video games, they probably have a freaking Switch. It sold right. 45 million units already in just over, in like what, two and a half years now. I just don't know... I think they're marketing to people that don't need this. And like you said, clearly it is, it's not fully baked. This is, you're, you're going to get salmonella eating this chicken because you didn't cook it through all the way when you took it out of the oven. Okay. That was as good as my quote. (laughs) Did you see Jose's tweet last week? It's like we're building communities through peeing on mushrooms. (laughs) And the funny, when I read that, I was like, I don't even remember saying that because I had some bourbon, but then I went back and watched it and you were just like stone faced. You're like, Hmm. We are building communities <laughs> through being on mushrooms. I don't know. I, it's not that I'm happy that Stadia sucks, but I was definitely right. Like, I don't... And like you're saying, I don't know how they rebound from this. No, it's it's it should have been done called, for already. It should have been called Early Access. They kind of got close with calling it the Founder's Edition, but it should... There should have been some... This... Can you imagine if next year the Xbox 2 and the PS5 ship and they're like, well, you, but you can't, you have to, if you want to use your DualShock 5, you have to plug it into the console because Bluetooth's not And it's not only going to work yet. on these models of yes. TVs for now. Oh, you've got an LG and not a Samsung? Well, you're only going to get 720p then. Like it's, this thing, I don't think it'll be here in a year. I think no, it will it's fail. Not, yeah, I, not originally either. I said two years. I think it's a year now. Uh, yeah. Because I don't know how you recover from this. Like this is... This is almost, it's its not as important, I guess, but it's probably worse than the way Xbox revealed the Xbox One with the Kinect and the $600 and it's bundled in and blah, 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 or 500 sorry, it wasn't 600 I don't know. I don't, but obviously the PS3 recovered from it. They ended up selling more than the X. like they had a horrible launch. They recovered, but that's like, it's a box that you plug into your TV and play games. Right. Where people will go to Target and they will see it. Like, are you going to go to Target in six months and see like Stadia Pro, like a con- like a, maybe you will. I don't know. Like a controller with a Chromecast bundled in. But then the other thing that's still asinine about this is you still have to buy these games. Yeah, you have to pay sixty dollars. These games are all old. They're all old. There's nothing that's like a launch. Ex- there's no killer app. There's everybody's already played these games, and you're charging sixty bucks for them. And if you get Stadia Pro, you have to pay 10 bucks a month, I think is what it was. Don't quote me. I think it's 10 bucks a month. So you're paying for the service every month. And you still have to buy the games. And if this thing disappears in a year, well, there go your games. <laughs> I just I have no idea who this is for. Yeah. I think Microsoft is going to get their XCloud stuff right. Google and and they're taking their time and they're they're doing it like with the insider edition and like they're rolling it out slowly and beta testing it and doing all this. Google's just like, man, eh, here you go. It sucks. All right, move on to the next tech that we'll get rid of. Yep. <sighs> Sean. Yes. What if I told you there's a new Half-Life game coming? I saw that. I got real excited for a second. And then we realized it was Half-Life Alex VR uh, from Eurogamer. After 12 long years of waiting and enough three based memes to fill an entire internet. It's officially here. There's a new Half-Life game on the way. As previously rumored, it's called Half-Life Alex, and Valve describes it as the company's, quote, flagship VR game. Half-Life Alex will be given the full reveal treatment this Thursday, the 21st of November. So tomorrow, hopefully I can get this up tomorrow. So the, in a couple of days from where we're sitting. This is so, like, cool, but also it sucks. Because yeah. you're only going to be able to play this if you have VR and a PC. Like you have, this is not, they're not putting this on PSVR. Right. I know they haven't said that officially, but I'm telling you, they're not doing that. Yeah. This will be a Steam exclusive. So it's like, cool, we finally get a new Half-Life game and we can't play it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just give us Half-Life 3. Launch title on the PS5. 
Is that an E3 prediction? <laughs> Maybe. An NPD came out for last month. The best-selling game, shockingly, was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's, uh, we talked about last week. It's already the best-selling game of the year, or two weeks ago. I don't even remember. The Outer Worlds came in at number two. So apparently people are really itching for a good Fallout game and not Fallout 76. <laughs> so I was happy that they, they charted that high. That's awesome. Luigi, Luigi's Mansion 3 came in at number three. And that doesn't even count digital sales. That's pretty So impressive. it could have, obviously it didn't sell more than Call of Duty. We no. know that. But it might have even been number two. It might have sold more than Outer Worlds. Who knows? Number four was Man 20. Number five was NBA 2K20. Number six, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It couldn't have been that horrible a launch if people are buying this game. But it reviewed horribly and they're going to completely change it. Number seven somehow was WWE 2K20. At that, this point, who is buying this game? It's people that are buying it just to play the wor- one of the worst games ever yeah, made. I guess. And, and make you, we probably should have. And just see if we can glitch the hell out of it and do some Let's Plays. Uh, FIFA 20 came in at number eight. Borderlands 3 is hanging in there at number nine. And Ring Fit Adventure on the Switch was number 10. Hmm. <sighs> water and now it's time for the wrap up sean rumors are swirling that gorilla is rumored to be reviving socom for the ps5 now you had socom back in the day i had that i remember i totally forgot but it just came back to me that came with like a little headset you could use and you can like give command that was pretty cool i like that game i don't remember much about it now and i'm guessing it probably hasn't aged well yeah but i remember i was I enjoyed that game quite a bit. I think if they do, if this is true, then first off, I guess it would also mean there's not going to be a kill zone game. It's just going to be they're working on Horizon and SOCOM. But I could see you, like how much you love the original Rainbow Six and like the tactical yeah. stuff of it. Like maybe that's what this could be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Your phone's buzzing. <laughs> Stop calling me. Uh, data miners have found that apparently Modern Warfare may... I, I hate when I type may and it capitalizes it. My phone for a while, it seems... Or maybe it doesn't do it on this one, but on my old one. Every time I would type Mario, it auto-corrects it to Mario, like all caps. Every time. I'm like, why is this in my... You mind? must have all caps it at some point. But like, even when it. I just do Mario, whether I do it all lowercase or I do a capital M, it, it would be like... Mario. I'm like, I, I don't know why I ever would have ever typed that, but it just drives me nuts. But it looks like Modern Warfare is going to be getting a 200-player Battle Royale. If it's free, I'll try it, but that just sounds... It's going to be you hiding in a bush somewhere. <laughs> well, also, it's probably going to kill my PS4. Like, 200 well, players. Like yeah. I, I can't even fathom that, but whatever. I will say, that if Blackout for... Or Black Ops 4 last year, multiplayer only. I didn't care anything about it. But people did say that the, the Blackout mode, the Battle Royale, was actually pretty good. Yeah. Street Fighter Five Champion Edition is coming out on Valentine's Day, and it costs $30. It will include all 40 characters, 34 stages, and 200-plus costumes. Gil is coming in December. And you can upgrade if you've already purchased Street Fighter Five for the low price of $25. <laughs> now, I got a bone to pick here. Because I am pretty sure almost four years ago when this game came out that they said they weren't going to do this. They said they were just going to do Street Fighter V and there's going to be DLC packs if you want more fighters or you can just earn fight money to download them and everything. But we're not going to do Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Two Turbo, Street Fighter Champion, Super, Super Turbo. We're not going to do that. Two years ago, I think it was, they put out Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. And now we're getting the Champion Edition. That's, and I paid sixty dollars for this game, and you expect me to shell out another twenty five to upgrade to the Champion Edition to unlock everybody? Oh, Capcom has done a lot right. I still think Street Fighter Five. It's a good game. It's just not. For I me. mean, I would consider getting it for thirty bucks. Well, yeah, because you didn't spend because 60. I didn't exactly. Yeah, but yeah. for thirty bucks, you unlock everything in the game. That's pretty cool. Yeah, maybe we can. Maybe I can try to even you up at two two. <laughs> maybe be fun. Did you see this? There's a patent for the DualShock 5 that just came out today. I saw it. I don't know if I believe it. I believe it? Oh, I thought I saved a picture of it. Well, nope. There's Henry Cavill. I guess I didn't. Um, But it looks like the Dual... They're, what they're saying is it looks like the sticks are a little smaller. I don't think so, but everybody's saying that, so I guess they are. 
the supposedly the L1 and R1 are a little bit smaller and the R2 and L2 are a little bit bigger, kind of like how they are on Xbox. I guess I almost never hold an Xbox controller. They did get rid of the light bar finally. Thank you. There's no need for that. But that also is confusing because like, don't you need that with PSVR? Yeah. Like, the, like Astrobot, you take your controller and you go, right. yeah. 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 So you can't. So this, what I wonder if, remember how that quote came out? I don't remember what it was at this point. Three weeks ago, a month ago, where they said we're actively working on backwards. Something about we're actively working on achieving backwards compatibility yeah. for PS4 games. Maybe this is what they meant. Maybe when they said, and PSVR will work on PS5, maybe some of it will, but not like you won't be able to play Astrobot on your PS5. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that'll it's, work. It's just weird. I don't I don't get it. Um but yeah, and it's got a USB port. I don't know why people are saying it has a USB port. I have a USB port on mine now. I don't get it. Unless they mean and the in? other end of the USB, yeah. Yeah, to hook like accessories and stuff. I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe. I thought I saved a picture of it, but I did not. Oh, well. Uh, Detroit Become Human is hitting PC next month. Well, that's cool. <laughs> and today the Game Awards nominees were announced. Game of the year. I'm not going to go through all of them. We should just still do a prediction show. I think we've done it just about every year. Yeah, I mean, we could run through them pretty quick. Control. The, these are the nominees for Game of the Year. Control, Death Stranding, which leads the way with nine nominations. Well, because Re- of Keeley. Uh, I'll get into that. <laughs> Kidding. Resident, okay, did you see my tweets yes. today? Okay. Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, Smash Ultimate, and The Outer Worlds. Uh, Jedi was not nominated. There was a big controversy about this today. That apparently it released in time to be considered, but seeing what Andrea Renee was tweeting, and she's one of the judges, was that like it released in the window, but people, the judges didn't have enough time to play the final build of the game before they had to submit their nominations, mm. so it didn't make it. Now, as based on our conversation, like it's not going to be game of the year for me, but a lot of people love I it. I think it deserved to be nominated. It sucks that it's not. But yet. I don't think it should win anyway so. i'm surprised controls in there that game bombed commercially but it did review well and i know nick and bernardo were going back and forth with me they really liked it it seems um i, I don't know why that game didn't sell well i just felt like it i don't know yeah um but death Stranding leads away with nine nominations those nominations are best action adventure game uh, best performance for Norman Fetus, best performance for Mads Mikkelsen, best audio design, best score music, best art direction. That's one I don't know that it should have been nominated for. The rest I get. Uh, best narrative, we'll see when I beat it. Best game direction, of course it's Kojima, and game of the year. Um, but yeah, just remember, Keely and Kojima are obviously best friends. Keely doesn't pick the nominees. There's a, there's a panel of I don't know how many judges that they pick the nominees and then they vote on the games and there's the fan votes and stuff too. So <clears throat> yes, it's weird that a game as polarizing as Death Stranding was nominated for that many, but I get it. I mean, like I said, it's up there for game of the year with me. Yeah. At this point, I think it's top two or three at the worst, unless it really drops off um, as I get later in the game here, but. That's it. That's episode 159. Thank you guys so much for being here and hanging in there with us. Eh, this wasn't as bad as this training. Um, the length, I mean, not the quality of the game versus <laughs> the podcast. Uh, obviously, we're part of the Nerd 901 family, so go to nerd901.com where they're connecting nerds across the Mid-South and the multiverse. Also, check out Ernie the Blur Without Fear over at YouTube, of course. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Kevin White 24 He's at Real Sean White. Together, we're at Two Player underscore go up <laughs> i think that's what it is because i point at you and then i come back this way i think the time i went uh, that i karate chopped you i either didn't point or i just pointed and came back and then did this Maybe. but now i made my every time i do it now i'm like <laughs> which way do i go you can support us on patreon patreon.com slash two player co-op we're on twitch at twitch.tv slash two player underscore co-op i was thinking about saturday night streaming fallen order but after I played it Friday, I was like, I'm not good at this game. This is, it's, it's not as embarrassing as when I was streaming Call of Duty, but like this game's frustrating and I don't, I'm just, it would probably be funny for people that were watching or, you know, listening to me doing commentary and just, but I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, and if you listen on audio services around the world, like Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and other audio services around the multiverse, please make sure you still go over to youtube.com slash two player co-op, like subscribe share with everybody we're closing in on 900 
which means we're then closing in on a thousand. Yes. Help us out. If you're not already subbed, please give us a sub. Uh, if you are already subbed and you know people who are not, maybe uh, pitch that to them as well. We really want to get to a thousand. Um, Got to get to 900 first, but really pushing for that thousand. Yep. Yeah. Any any help you can provide is awesome. Ernie, just send us a couple hundred. Uh, yeah, that's it. This was a good episode. I like this. Good job. Good job by you. It's weird now because it's like, well, there's nothing else this year I want to play. So now it's beat Jedi, beat Death Stranding, yeah. convince you to play Death Stranding. And then, like I was trying to think, I don't think there's really anything. Eventually I'll get Call of Duty back from you. Oh, I guess you didn't play that anymore. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. No, I haven't played it anymore. But I mean, I want to try out like the Spec Ops mode and maybe a little bit mul- more multiplayer. But yeah. Yeah. That's it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Until the next time, Sean. <gasps> Go ahead and dig us out. Thank you for playing.